Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome to the Winner Circle Podcast, where winners win and losers just go home. Uh, today, we're actually going to be talking with Jeff Lee and Mike O'Connor, who are two very well-renowned 105 athletes. Of course, as always, is my co-host, Nicholas Camby. Hello, Anthony. How are you? Good. How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing great. Just a l- little sore from training for this big competition called Clash. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a real hootenanny coming soon. It's going to be a hoedown hootenanny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there is going to be an open bar at the after party. So you're right. Um, yeah. Clash on the coast. We have some big news with that. Um, so we are, hey, before doing- you get anywhere, how long is the open bar? A lot of people are going to be asking. <laughs> Two hours, which right. is a long time for an open bar. That is, that's like an eternity. That's why I blacked out last year is because there's a two-hour open bar. <laughs> all right. So sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so we're doing this. cool. So people throughout the community, the country have, have wanted a way to get be part of Clash, right? Um, and some sponsors, some smaller companies, they can't afford our sponsorship because Clash costs a lot. So we don't, we don't nickel and dime our sponsors. So we created this idea. It's going to be a big branding wall, like the ones you see behind all our lifters at all our shows. And it's going to have people's signatures and their company logos. Um, you could purchase a signature or a company logo. All the money is going directly to the athletes. Um, this is kind of our way of trying to help you guys while also getting everyone involved and kind of creating this one unity um, thing. And I, I think it's, it's going to be a part, it's going to be historical. You know, it's going to be almost memorial type thing. So I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm very excited. I hopefully, hopefully it does well. Hmm. I might want to write something on there. Uh, appropriate yes yes absolutely a good signature yep um yeah so that's the big news with the clash uh the clash right now yeah cool um so in other news of course anthony you've been you've been getting hot when it comes to the coaching tell us about kind of like revamping in terms of um getting back with like good athletes and helping them in their careers well, so yeah, I've always, I've always kept a very small uh, client list, like while I was training, um, competing, mostly it was people that I, I, I knew I didn't really do coaching calls for the most part, trying to get people, but I retired from the army and I have time now to dedicate. And one of the things I've always loved doing is either mentoring, coaching, whatever, whatever, if it's, if it's in, in the army, if it was high school football, if it was our clients, I enjoy it. I enjoy helping people. So I'm kind of, I'm going to expand, um, expand my list and I'm going to, I'm taking on clients until I hit the number 40. Um, I'm keeping my client list at 40 uh, because I need to manage it. And I don't think people would get adequate, you know, communication for me at anything over 40 personally. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm taking on clients and athletes and I'm, I'm here to help. So if guys are interested, go to his Instagram, you can shoot him a message and then you guys can connect from there, but that's very exciting. And then um, only the coaching or educational item on my end is my seminar is uh, May 15th. So it's about half filled right now. So another 10 spots over at total performance sports. So a few weeks after crash clash. Yeah, that's really good. That's quick. That's good. Fill up. Everyone signed up to Cammy. Cammy knows what he's doing. He knows what he's good at. He's going to teach you how to be great at what he does. All right. Enough nonsense, Anthony. Tell us, tell the people what they want to hear. Eddie versus Thor. Your thoughts, your predictions. Everyone loses. Everyone loses. <laughs> this has been the most ridiculous week of my life on social media. The, the hype is pretty interesting. I just saw uh, it's, it's, and it sounds like Thor, hype. Thor. Thor snaps at like anything Eddie says. <laughs> it's and it sucks for Thor because he doesn't speak great English. So like it's always sounds ridiculous when he does try to talk shit. And then Eddie just says whatever he wants and doesn't care what it doesn't care, which you gotta respect that in the end. I mean, if you can say what you want and not in I mean, that's a life to live, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as like a sporting box, the box I think everyone's gonna lose. The participants, the audience, the promoters, everybody loses. But who's gonna win the fight? <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. I bet she's gonna be a DQ. So someone throws a ten, low blow. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Eddie headbutts him. Headbucks. I, I don't. Want, I don't. Want, actually, that's a pretty. Eh, it's likely. And this is gonna continue. Who knows? <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna get the corner, and Eddie's gonna get pissy. He's gonna fucking headbutt him. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, it's there's definitely got to be a lot of tension, a lot of build up to this. So I, I, I'm taking Thor by decision, but I think both of them will get knocked knocked down at one point so that's well, speaking yes. of which i'm gonna pump another podcast thing if you're not watching the big laws's youtube channel when, with stuff with right. strongman of the world you need to everyone watching because i've never been i i'm not even a i don't watch youtubes for the most part but i will watch his every time because it's it's good stuff it's the best content out there it so is i think it's the something best to aspire to we are aspiring to be as good as laws we just keep we just keep like chasing we're just in his curtails this shadow yeah. this he's just 
but he's paving the way. He's doing a good he job. He is. He's the first one to come out of straw man and actually, actually make a, a good channel, not just a look at me channel. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Michael Connor is in the green room. We're also waiting on Jeff. So we're going to take a qu quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Guys, uh -oh. Uh -oh. part two, we have Jeffrey Lee and Michael Connor. You might famously know Jeffrey Lee from bronze medalist at America's Strongest Man 2020. And of course, your Jersey class champion. And then, of course, we have Michael Connor from Massachusetts, the best state in the world. And he's your Clash on Cumberland champ. And they're both coming for the finals at the Clash finals. Why, would you, why would you use ASM and Famous in the same line? <laughs> well, there, are people awesome. that, there are people in the sport that don't know he did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's saying. True. No, it's true. Jeff is famously one of the strongest people in 105. That's what I think. I think he, that's what makes him. Is, he's world, so world, world, world's strongest Asian. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If, I'm not sure if that's still. That used to be an old handle of yours. Yeah, I mean, it still Chunky. technically is because yeah. there's, no, there's no other Asians. <laughs> no, there's no other Asians at, at any World Strongest Man's anymore. So I was the last one in 2017, and no one else has done it. I mean, so I'm Good still point. technically it. Yeah. Well, hopefully we're gonna. Hopefully we'll inspire more. Um, yeah. but, but we're going to start off with clash predictions. So we're going to get right to the good stuff. Ugh. Right to the good stuff. And there's a cat butt. Yeah, I was saying, the cats gave the good stuff right now, too. <laughs> um, Freaking fatties. And then, we, and then, of course, we have some good questions. But, um, so to, but to be fair, we're going to keep group the, one, the groups that are out out of the prediction. So we're in groups one and six. Um, so we're going to start with group two. So we want to hear our expert panels. And then, of course, we'll hear after Anthony, maybe Anthony's answer might be a little biased, so we want to hear Anthony's. I will be biased. I don't give a shit about anybody. All right, fine. Then you, you made them. Anthony's. You made the Anth freaking heats. Yeah, I didn't make them. I didn't make them to place people where I wanted them. I made them to <laughs> the talent out. Uh, except so, for the sixth one, I think. I think you kind of wanted. To oh, do what the? Fuck <laughs> <out of here. laughs> no. so who's, who's your group, Johnny? Ooh. <laughs> and then I got Saxton, and no, no, oh, that's right. I, no, I did put Saxton too. I was going to say John. All right, Saxton and Johnny. Right. Yeah, and those European. Whatever. Anyways, Heat Two, no, right? No, we're, we're starting Heat no, Two, right? Can't you're be. right about no. Let's let's continue. Heat Six. Hold on. You're right because Johnny and Sachs. I mean, uh, they're like uh, Heat Six they're, isn't they're, any harder than than any. I mean, all of the they yeah. each have a good lineup of. Yeah, he's look, see just trying to make me buys because he knows I like Johnny, so he's trying to get me to make his heat harder. <laughs> no, I'm just. I mean, uh, yeah. Going back, you look at all the heats. No matter what, there's always going to be like three, four guys that you're like, wait. Who's yeah. going to make the top two? You know what I mean? There's, that's how I did. I, so, yeah. so, so there's no way to really. So how I did it is I, what I did is I spread out the people that for the finalists, I tried to spread it out. Right. So they weren't like three or four grouped in. Yeah. And from there I went, I, I went off of how guys that played last year, how they did. And I put them in worse groups because it's their second year. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. So I put them in, in groups that were weaker to, to toughen them up and stuff like that. And basically I tried to do three contenders per three, like known contenders that I've seen compete. I tried to like put them across and then fill it in as, as I went. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's the best you can do, you know, it's, it's yeah. tough to do. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole lineup, everyone that's going to be showing up is they're all going to be tough no matter what. So everyone's it's, got but their I actually there. do enjoy a lot of the matchups. And, of course, I'll go over through the notes after I learned – since I did a little research before the call. Um, so there's some interesting – We had notes. time because Jeff wasn't here, so we had time to research. <laughs> Sorry again. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to group three just because I want – this is an interesting note. We have probably one, like, the um, older competitors, like, in, in terms of, like, Sean Shoemaker – um, I think he's almost 39 now, right? <laughs> uh, but then also Ollie Clark was a 20-year-old, 21-year-old uh, strong man too, who looks pretty strong. Um, he's out of England. I saw him do uh, 280 kilos uh, squat for five, which was was a pretty strong um, squat just out of the gate. So group three, you have Dan Hughes, Shoemaker, Nick Hine, Ollie Clark, Tyler Simpson, and Jesse Nelson. So experts, who are the top two that are moving on from that group? Yeah, it's tough. See, good luck, Mike. You know, <laughs> that that heat is especially tough to to predict. But uh, yeah. I don't know. You, you know, Hein looked really strong um, in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Jesse's a great competitor. Uh, I I do th I think Dan is going to get through. Um, yeah. He had a solid performance last year. He's he's been uh, 
progressing even. So I, I see Dan making into the finals. After that, that's it's tough to to say for sure who else I think is going to be in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, just because you know Dan, he went from making the finals and then getting his pro card, and yep. then so. But I know he had a little bit of it ish, like injury wise, uh, right before kind of OSG, so he didn't do that. I think, and then, but he's been looking good uh, with training. So as long as he can keep himself healthy, I agree. Be, I, I, I think Dan good. is. I think Dan is definitely going to be. Dan's a clear. So who? So <laughs> pretty much, is it a fight between like um, Shoemaker, Hein? And Nelson, Nelson's a pretty, of course, pretty solid competitor. He's yeah, that's um, that's America's strongest man. Also a podium finisher, just like Jeff. I'll um, give it to Jesse. So uh, yeah, if I had to pick another person, I'd probably give it to Jesse, Jesse. just given his experience, his, his I'm, kind of- uh, I'm sorry, Sean, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I could see Hein uh, pulling through just because this yeah. is what, his second or third 105 show, whatever it was. So you think so he's still, he's still up and up. you know. That's, and that's the only reason the I, I don't like give him the, the nod there because he doesn't have the, the same experience that some of these other guys. Right. Yeah, that's tough. That's I mean, tough. you know, he's been competing, I think, but he still managed to, you know, do decent at uh, Jersey as well. So that yeah. kind of helps. Yeah, he but also be being at Jersey and then going into Clash. I don't know how beat up he is. Uh, I'm I'm messed up right now. I'm all jacked up. So, you know, that yeah, might I'm messed up just watching you guys. I mean, what I've what I've seen what I, what you see with that competitors is there's a point where like you hit a level of competition and like once you get there, it changes everything and you you uh, you rise to that level. And I think that's what yeah. happened with the jersey. Yeah, no. I mean, everyone busted their ass for that. So yeah, it's it was good. It was a good show. So, um, so moving, so let's go, let's go moving on. So now we're going to go back to uh, group two. Of course, I, I want to add in that nice uh, tidbit. Um, so group two, I'm going to start with the uh, international guy. Um, his name is Glenn Cutler. I think he's, uh, he's from Irish. <coughs> or from, sorry, he's from Ireland. Um, but I think he's half decent because on his profile, he says he's a half decent strongman. Um, you also have Anthony San Lorenzo. You have Jordan Donaldson, Jordan Stewart of Canada. Um, you have slick Nate Bowling, and then you have Mike the Slice Cogden. So who who's two? Where are the two moving Oof. on? Oof. Cogden always shows up on game day, yeah. um, and he was so close last year. If he were in just about any other heat last year, he probably would have made the finals. So I, I see Cogden making it through. Yeah, same. So Cogden, again, that second is always the tough one here. Yeah, <laughs> I try, I tried to put one favorite, and then I tried to fill it in. Yeah. No, it well, you have out. San Lorenzo, the win of course, the winner of the Rockies. Yeah, um, he looked really series. good. He looked really good there too. And then you got pro strongman Nate Bowling, who is, um, of course, had a good little resurgence re re recently. Yeah. Let me talk about Nate. He impressed the hell out of me at Jersey. Um, I know he's yeah. had a rough go for a couple of years, and he yeah. he, yeah, hung, he put like, on he, a great show there. Yeah, he did really well. Good numbers. So I'm I'm yeah. actually excited to see Nate at Clash and see what he can. And do. then you got the two Jordans. You got the <laughs> Jordan from Nova Scotia and. Um, I believe oh, I should know this um, Newfoundland and then also Jordan Donaldson of, of Chicago, the bad boy of strongman. So <laughs> where is Jordan, is Jordan Donaldson going to push for the finals? What kind of, <coughs> what kind of mood is he waking up that day? No. Yeah, so, How drunk is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, here's what I say. If Jordan puts everything into this and wants it, he will get it. Yeah. yeah. He has the ability. I, I think, I think he will beat Michael if he really wants it like mike yeah. wants it I mean, he, he has that talent he has that talent yeah. he really he has raw talent of just right. like showing up and busting ass so group four uh i also appreciated this group group choice because he put the tallest athlete with the shortest athlete in isley and tyler young so you have justin loy mckeegan from ireland tyler young josh isley gavin um for, if, Prosper, forgot to write his last name, but he's a Welsh competitor. Um, he's also doing the deadlift um, event um, later that afternoon. And then you have Andrew Curtis. I don't have too much information on him. So who are your two there? Talk about tough heats. Another tough heat. This is super. I, I couldn't pick a – I had trouble picking a winner myself um, out of here. It's But um, just even like just kind of first looks, um, of course, you got two very kind of static compact guys versus two tall lanky guys so it's going to be interesting versus like the on the static movements on the pressing movements and then all, of course there's the throwing the um of course the odd object medley favors the taller guy and then also sometimes the um of course the, the drag and the chain drag something that um taller guys are generally do a little better so 
is, is, is of course, it's going to be, a, is it going to be like a physical matchup right here? That's, that's, it's, that's why it's so, this one's so interesting. This one's tough. Yeah. But also you had like, for instance, like Isley's a great thrower, but you had Tyler Young finishing the keg throw last year. So experts, yeah. tell us what you're thinking. Nope. You're experts. You have to think something. You're not allowed to not think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you just go down a list, let's say. So we'll start with Justin. Like he'll, you know, he does really well with the moving. So that's already two good events for him there. And remember, but, remember last year he had a great day one and then just had a bad day two. Yeah. So he might be able to carry that momentum through the whole day this time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think that, yeah, having it split, um, all five events in one day, while might be a little more taxing, you can at least just like keep going for the day. That's why I like Jersey too. Like we were just all five events in like what four or five hours, whatever it was. I think less we than like that. Flying <laughs> that, that short thing. <laughs> Sorry. That's my dog. Okay. Um, so again, Justin's got two good events. Throwing, um, I think he's good at that too. So that's three. He wants to redeem himself for the squat and then pressing. It's you know, that yeah, might be little outlier or the the thing that like makes a break between here's the thing though man that block is gonna fuck people up again like it did last year even though yeah. even though people are able to hit it now i'm telling you because every, everyone in training hit it last year right <laughs> and then they got that yeah. fucking thing at that at that medley and it's i mean it's different yeah so uh, the, uh, the thing you can't count out is here in this group is josh isley he he oh, yeah. he oh, made he made like last year uh, he ended up beating me uh, I, I won two events. He won the other four, uh, but he zeroed the two events. So that's how I came out with the point. I still made out in the points. And of course, and I, his, his press has been improving. So it's, it's not as much of a handicap. So he, might, instead, he might get maybe one or two instead of maybe a, a pure zero. He, but, he is one of the nicest guys too. So yeah. like last year, which was fun because you had him and Geiger in the same group. So it was really the battle of the tall guys. They have the, they're the same matchup. They, they have all the same strengths and weaknesses. So it was really interesting for them to go along. I knew only one of them could really make out on top just because they were so similar in nature. Um, but yeah, it, sh it should be interesting. So who, who do you guys get? We, we need it. So we still need an answer. So who do you to? <laughs> Maya wants to know. You have to do it. Uh just because I like Justin and I've talked to him a lot more, I'll, I'll give him the nod of uh, making it. Uh, again, yeah, that's, I, that's I, I agree with that one, Justin. Yeah, the other one. All right, Justin, no, no pressure. Um, <laughs> and then the last group, uh, group five, you have uh, Richie Muchigamba. We have Reed Thompson. You have Bob. Um, we have Mr. Geiger. We have Travis Hayes from, he's a competitor out of China. Um, and then oh, you have, uh, John SB, who I believe is Norway strong. He's been Norway's strongest 105 for many years, and he actually yep. beat uh, the Glenn guy that's in our group. So he seems like a, they're both both those guys came like one and two, and I think the Nor Norway strongest man. So both pretty tough competitors. But who do you guys are thinking here? Experts, tell us. Uh, I, this was this is one that I think I'm actually able to pick out two names that that uh, I feel good about. So I think Richie and Bob, I think Bob's going to gonna pull it off. and, and make Bob's it. press was looking really snazzy the other day. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, Richie looks good. Uh, he, you know, he's recovering from his, his surgery and stuff. So if he, I think that, yeah, he'll be able to pull that off. Reed, yeah. Reed's another um, tough one too. Though. Reed had a bunch of issues yeah. too. So he's, yeah. he's a tough one. And not I love Bob. Not many, so. I think not many people saw Reed last that were counting Reed for the finals. So yeah. Again, Reed's a, Reed's a competitor. He's been in it for a while too, so he can, mm -hmm. he can definitely. Yeah, like I said last there. last year, I mean he he made the finals. Like no one no one predicted him would perform like he did. He killed it. Yeah. So yeah, Reed, he's a sleeper. He's, but he, just because just because he had that injury, and we don't know how what kind of shape he's in. Or he hasn't posted a lot on Instagram. No. He's a but he's a he's pretty much a vert, semi pro. He's literally got took fourth twice at nationals right the cusp the line no 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 nicholas everybody here at clash is a professional <laughs> he's not yeah. a semi-pro he's a full pro yeah <laughs> but, but in turn yeah absolutely my, my mistake my mistake hey jeff how much money did you make when you won your pro card never mind don't answer <laughs> i lost money <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyways yeah. moving on yeah. moving on so uh we got a nice fan question so moving on from the clash questions so i hope that suffices a lot of people's uh interest but again uh things always can change in the next few weeks um uh, so 
our first fan question. Uh, tell us about your best deadlift numbers. So what's your best in training and your best in competition? Uh, yes, me. Uh, 765 at ASM was my best ever in uh, competition. Uh, never really tried pat, uh, maxing out since my injuries and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, 765. Cool. Yeah. Mike? Uh, in trainings, I got I got 765 and 755 for a double. Um, that was a, that was actually a couple of years ago. I haven't really maxed out my deadlift for a while, but um, back, best deadlift in competition was 750. Cool. Jeff, I, I I think both of you were 800 pullers right now. By the way, after seeing you pull that axle. Yeah, after pulling nine on the axle at 625, I think if and I've been on the axle for like over six months now. First yeah. training for. Cumberland and now training for for Clash on the Coast, so yeah. I'm ready to go back to a regular barbell. Dude, you, you yeah. know what you do? You should hit a. You should plan to hit a max after Clash, like right after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll play around with that. So, oh, oh, I was I was pretty beat up after two days of competing. Like my knees never, or three days of competing, my knees never hurt so much. But yeah, <laughs> well, you don't have to do it the day after, but yeah, two weeks. No. Yeah, a week or two. Maybe maybe you're being too, you're being too. Twenty twenty five. The week the week after you have to do it some point the week after. Fuck, Camby's being too cautious. He's a pussy. Right. This question is for this question is for Mike. Um, how does it feel entering the sport later in life? Uh, what are your aspirations and uh, that you want to hit? And later, later in later in life. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess I started a little bit later than some people. I, I started strongman at thirty one, so I guess that's a little bit. Uh, so this, this, is a, this is a this is a fan question. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think I previously I, I had uh, done bodybuilding, and I actually think that at least the way that I trained for bodybuilding, it helped build a, a big base of strength, so it actually prepared me um, for strongman. And uh, my aspirations, I don't know. I, I want to. I just, I want to be able to compete with the best. I want to go up against the best and, and kind of prove myself. And, and uh, it's not any particular contest that I um, necessarily win, want to win. I just want to, I want to be among the best in the world. Great answer. Uh, Jeff, um, I want to, I want you, I want you also to answer that same question, but more like, what do you hope to achieve by your end of your strongman career? Uh, well, definitely. Uh, Keep, in, keep trying to go for those uh, ASM titles. Those will be – that'll be a fun one to try and get. I don't know, Cammy. You're just – you're too much for me. <laughs> I don't know if I can uh, topple that. But, you know, ideally, yeah, try to get an ASM title. Um, some point I want to, you know, break that uh, stone record because whatever, 502, that's whatever – or whatever it is now. That doesn't seem too bad. Um, and that's really it. I don't know. Just trying to – keep competing until I can, until I can't. Yeah. And then, uh, so this rolls into kind of my question, Jeff. So when did you originally start competing? Cause we met back in Reno in 2014 and just some context. Uh, I met Jeff like laying <laughs> on the ground for the first time, like trying to survive with all his might, um, this weight cut that he, cause he was cutting down to 175. Um, but that, was that the first year you were competing or did you start? Uh, no, that first year, uh, I started training like 2013 ish whatever um just messing around and then april of 2014 was my first competition and just kept going at it and then it was like oh let me go to nationals and i got smoked of course because you shouldn't cut happens. close to what like 20 pounds 30 pounds whatever it is so what did you cut from two like 200? Uh, 205 wow. <laughs> yeah yeah and that, yeah, when you're that light, that's a lot of weight. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was actually just a quick tidbit, but I was talking to Andrew Hainis, who did like a 30 pound cut. And I was yeah. telling him that like they're cutting about like 15% of the body weight, where if we do a 20 pound cut at our weight, it's only like 7%. Yeah. Body yeah cut. So it's, it's yeah. all about the percentage. It's not the actual weight. Yep. So, so what did you, end, so how did you end up faring that uh, Reno? I forget. I kind of, uh, let's see. I think it was like, I was, towards the bottom like maybe 19 or 16 out of like 30 something something silly like that so whatever i mean it was just fun to go out and just hang out i guess but it was like oh never never again just gotta get that, bigger. that was your that was your first nat was that your your, your first nationals yeah cool. first ever oh uh, yeah that, of course <laughs> reno was a fun one um so of course another question question so this is a, my question um and you kind of touching a upon it but if you want to go into a little more 
um, details, Mike, uh, but how has bodybuilding helped your strongman journey? Yeah, I think I already, I already talked about it uh, a little bit, but yeah, just the way that, uh, the way that I trained, um, for bodybuilding, I, I, I use more of a, uh, like DC training or, or Yates style HIT training. So a lot of high intensity, um, uh, heavy, uh, type training. Um, so yeah, I think it helped me build a good base of strength, but also just I think all the skills that you develop through bodybuilding, like kind of mind skills, um, that, uh, that just help you prepare for anything. Um, I think that, that kind of carried over to strongman too. Cool. Well, excellent. But yeah, we, what I always notice is that you, of course, I have a very strict regimen. I feel like the yeah. regimen for bodybuilding will be more strict, especially diet wise than a strongman. So, um, I think the that's discipline he learned in bodybuilding, I think is probably one of the bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is actually a good question that we've had from other, um, podcasts, but like at what moment, so this is a question for both of you guys. So at what moment did you realize your potential in the sport? So was it like one day where everything clicked or did, was it a gradual, but like, what was that? What day, or if you can just describe a moment. So Jeff, I'll let you go first. Oof. Oof. Um, when do you know, I was like, I have, I have some, something special is going on. I mean, oh man. That's a tough one. Well, it, it kind of helped that like I won my first contest, even though it was novice. Um, but I was like, oh, I won. I can keep doing this. So that just already like pushed me to keep going. Um, and then just continually like trying to get strong and competing and having fun with it. That's just kept pushing me. Um, but let's see. So. I don't know. I think like around like 2016 was like when I think you no, you, you got your pro card 2015. Yes, sir. Yeah. So after seeing those, like those plat pluses and things like that, I was like, Oh, those look fun. Maybe I can try getting my pro card. Cause I never really knew about it. Um, about the pro system and all that shit until like, you know, seeing you guys compete and stuff like that. So after doing, after seeing that, I was like, all right, 2016, that's when I went for that. Uh, those two plat pluses I went for and, finally got that pro card so jeff so fun fact i I, I never told you this um Ooh. in 2016 when that plat plus in may when you lost to clayton and then when you went to jacksonville one mm-hmm. at both those shows that's the reason i went 105 because i was still heavyweight at the time oh really oh. I, you caught my interest or whatever and i watched oh. you i watched you on both of them and i was like yo this dude's strong as shit I can fucking, I don't got to weigh 290 because <laughs> I was not a good, I wasn't a good 280, 290 at that point. That right. was like fresh into my journey and I was really, really fat. Um, nah. No, I seriously. You, yeah. you met me that, you didn't meet Arnold. me the Arnold the 2017, yeah. but you were I already watched, leaning. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to start, but I watched you and that's what fucking motivated me to go 105. Yeah, I never told you I, that. I created this monster here. <laughs> you, you, did. you are, you're responsible for everything. <laughs> uh, same same that's, question, Mike. <laughs> when did you realize that potential? Oh. Was there a moment? Was there a contest? No, I mean, I, I, I still even think I have a, a lot uh, kind of more potential that I haven't grown into yet, but it, it's been a gradual thing. There was no particular moment. Um, I mean, my, my first contest, uh, I never competed in novice. I, I entered uh, like open 231. Um, and play second so I was like okay I guess I'm, I'm at least decent and I was having a lot of fun with it and so I just the way I mean I I can't really do anything without going all in on any on something so I kind of went all in on it and it just I was able to progress um, from contest to contest and I and I still am so um, yeah it's been gradual I tell you the moment for me for you Mike was fucking natural <laughs> natural yeah dude. Like that's when, that's when you, that's when you became someone to chase instead of chasing others. That is when that's the first time. Well, actually the second time, but I was going to say it's, it's one of the only times when I came into a contest completely confident and knew that if I executed to the best of my ability, I was going to take that competition and just having that level of confidence and belief in yourself, I think makes such a big difference in how you perform. It does. Um, The other time that I had, that was actually the, the competition before that, when I tore my bicep. Um, I was just so locked in, so focused and so confident about that competition. And uh, both of those times, it's, it's made a huge difference in how I, how I come out and perform. Yeah. And yeah. because of your mental toughness and that belief in yourself, like I said, you are one of the people you moved ahead in the race. And now people are looking at your ass as you progress. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
But as uh, Mike's training partner, of course, I've been observing his movements and, of course, his progression, um, of course, even prior to Clash. Um, and, of course, what I've kind of figured out is it's not a um, if Michael when it's when Mike's going to win. So it's he's on its way. It's just Again, win. let me just pause this podcast because I'm looking at my shoulders next to Canby's. Are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? Huh? All the, uh... Look, now he's flexing. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was looking a little... Hey, I can put trophies little... in my background, too. Right? <laughs> uh, Anthony, when did you realize your potential in the sport? What's wrong, man? Uh, when I won my pro card. Actually, you know what? Time out. No. The, <laughs> the biggest thing for me... So that I was good. I was still good. But at the Arnold 2018, when I made day three, at, in like I was sixth place, and I actually had a shot at fucking taking first. That's when I said... That's when I knew I was going to fucking do some damage on the 105s. <laughs> Cause that was before my world title and Titan games and all that stuff. That was, yeah. that's, that's when I knew I was going to start doing some damage, like for real. So the 2018 Arnold. Yep. That's for me. Cause 2017, the world's, I was still just kind of having fun. Like for the most part, like I wasn't, I was serious, but I wasn't like yeah. all in. I didn't know what I could do. And then when I am, yeah. When I was chasing Alexei Novikov for three fourths of the fucking competition, I was like, wait, I belong. Hold on. If I could take the strength of the 105s, I could win, you know, yeah. that's a great, great answer. Uh, my, myself was pretty early. It was probably either after Reno or going into also the Arnold. Um, I made it to the main stage and I was, I was really close from winning that contest. Uh, just a couple of mistakes. And was that, that one of five one you showed you, someone shared the other day. It was you and somebody else doing yes, me and uh, me and Vladimir Reshka from the Ukraine. We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was beating him on the stairs, but I, I, it was my first, it was a, it was actually a real mystery event. Um, and it, it came out only like days before and I never trained a power stairs. Ooh, there's uh, gonna be a mystery event America's Strongest Man. Ooh, all right, tell us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you almost got me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was like a true mystery event, so that was pretty fun. But like, I realized I should have like I was doing like little hops, like one foot, one foot, one foot, instead of like double up and then thrusting the hips, double up, thrusting the hips. So I learned, but unfortunately, the Vladimir Reshko was already like, kind of like a veteran at that point, so he he ended up um, doing well. He took. Second, uh, Marcin Senwicki, former champ, took uh, Marcin. Yeah, Great he took third. You guys never met. He's one of my favorite people. He's so he, nice. He's, he's hilarious. And then you have Zach Hadge was the one that he won that year. That was his first 105 Arnold win. And then he and then the year after, um, he won the the heavyweights. Ah, uh, the Stone of Steel massacre. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a low. It's a legend because that was before my time, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I love that thing. I like it. Good I, at never, it. I never had a problem with it. Yeah. At the, but that was the one the year was it was uh it was only only chalk. So it was yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was kind of cruel. Um so this so this is um so a question for both of you guys. So this was a fan question. Um so what so of course you guys both have your different approaches. Um, but what is what do you guys do when you focus on maintaining your weight before competition? Do you prefer to be heavier um and cut or stay close to the competition weight? And how's that? Um, and tell us a little bit about your experiences in terms of cuts. So, <laughs> so let's start. Yeah, let's start with um, let's start with Jeffrey. Well, yeah, as we talked about earlier, uh, I can do some big cuts. I just won't do well at the competition after. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I try to like maintain um, maintain around uh, you know close to body weight or close to competition weight, whatever. So I'm usually walking around like 240, no more than 245. So that cut. That isn't too bad for me. Um, and then I know I'm really bad at this. I got to keep better track of what I eat or how much I'm eating, but I'm pretty sure I'm under eating at the same time. So if I can make, like get that better, get my diet down better, then I probably could be bigger and or leaner, whatever. But yeah, I try to stay around. I, I don't want to, I'm not a fan of uh, making too big of a cut. How about you, Mike? Yeah, kind of the same. And then it's not necessarily the, not wanting to have a, make a big cut, but I, I stay around, I walk around like 240, like two, anywhere, for, anywhere between 238 to 242. Um, and that's where I'll cut from. Sometimes I'll bring it down to 238, but um, I think for Clash, I'll probably cut from 242. Um, but I've, I've tried pushing my weight heavier before and I just don't feel as athletic or healthy. Uh, I feel much more comfortable right around 240. Um, so it's kind of, and I'm still able to progress strength wise. So uh, that's where I keep it. And for the viewers out there, Mike is sexy as shit at 240. He's still very lean. So, <laughs> most, yeah, most, so vascular, most vascular strongman. I was commenting on his veins today when he was just deadlifting on his 
on his inner thigh. I was like, my inner thigh, man. <laughs> yeah, they, they're, just, they're just they're just popping. That's you commented on any inner thigh, thigh veins. <laughs> Short, so. you sure I'm, glad, was, uh, I'm glad you noticed thigh yeah. and you sure uh, not that? some other vein. <laughs> I know what I saw. It, it, all right, keep it PG. All oh, right, this is, of, fa- this is a family of, no, podcast, no, no. Jeffrey. All right. Speaking of wiener jokes, um, last weekend I was watching Beerstone and Travis Ortmeyer told a story about his dick twice on the live stream. Ooh. Was it good? Was it a good story? No, it was. He was just talking about how big it is. <laughs> twice on the live stream for a professional stro- Well. So I'm, yeah, but I, it blew my mind. I was like, what am I listening to? Anyways, next. My only knock was that contest, the, the, the keg over bar, the keg bar, or the, uh, sorry, the keg over bar, but it was keg over like a loose string. PVC pipe, yeah. yeah. And then, and then the, the hardest broke on the truck pull. There was a lot of, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I do not envy Gabe with that show. All right. Ooh. So I, I got a, cute, a, a couple of fun questions towards the end, but uh, this, is, this is the portion, Anthony, that you throw on the curveball sliders or change-ups. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And these are baseball references, just in case, Jeff. I think talking about cricket. <laughs> I know baseball. I just don't like it. Guys, I honestly, I don't really have any like anything to, to mess with you with. Um, yeah. I, 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 it's hard <laughs> with these guys because they're, they're, they're nice guys. Um, the, so one thing I do want to say, what is your favorite city and what city do you hate the most? Oof. <laughs> Jeff, you go first. Oh, why me? I'm always going first. Because you laughed. Yeah, that's true. I broke the silence. <laughs> Favorite city. Oof. Nicholas, what about you while he's thinking? Fuck. Hmm. My favorite city, of course, is Boston. It's my, it's my background. Go. It's home. All right. All right. You know, I know every inch of this city. What city do you hate, Nicholas? Ah. Uh, hmm. What city do I not enjoy? Hmm. There's no really city I don't like um, that I haven't had a good time. I would say. Uh, like New York is the spectrum of like great food and entertainment, but the, the streets are, can be super dirty. So there's parts of New York I kind of don't like. Pro- oh. I would say, you know what? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna throw Providence under the, the bus. All right. Before there was <laughs> GPS, you had to use, um, <laughs> you had to print out your directions. And if you're a student driving to Providence, it's miserable because nothing makes sense. So but you know what, Providence? Because you heard it here first. But that's Boston to too. The streets in Boston don't make too much sense yeah. either. Nicholas Camby says, Dear Providence, go screw yourself. All right, yeah. Jeff, you had plenty of time. No, before before having my like cell phones and stuff, like driving through Boston, I was like, where the fuck am I? Where yeah. the hell am I going? So, so you hate Boston? No, I hate Jersey still. Jersey's still fucking trash. The whole state. The whole state. <laughs> Gotta pick a city. Yeah. No, nope. whole state. <laughs> All right. He hates <laughs> Jersey. He hates Jersey. What city do you love, Jeff? Oof. Um, you know what? Even though I grew up in New York or I'm from New York and stuff, like I was raised in Taiwan for a little bit. So I like Taipei. That's where my mm-hmm. grandparents are. That's where my family's from. Love the food there, culture, everything there. So finally, you, a, a, a little bit of culture from you. Thank yeah. you. Surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, you're up. Uh, favorite city, same as can be Boston. I mean, this is where I grew up in this area and I just love yeah, the like, historic yeah. nature of it. And, yeah. Um, and least favorite city so i used to i used to say new york to this question because i'd only ever, ever been to manhattan and i i hate manhattan um then i went to brooklyn and brooklyn was cool um so it, i guess i'll specify it to just manhattan is the city that all I right Dear you know manhattan, what no manhattan, i hate, hate yourself. brooklyn Do you? i hate brooklyn too you do oh i so, liked it there it depends where you're going and stuff but like at this point all these freaking like hipsters and they're all moving in and so much traffic. You can't get anywhere. No parking. You can't, there's no way to freaking drive around. So hey, Brooklyn. Right. But isn't that the part of New York? You don't have cars. I mean, freaking... all right, calm down Yankees. Let's stop talking about the Northeast. <laughs> all you Yanks join me down. in the south. That's where I No, My favorite, my favorite place ever is Tampa Bay. <laughs> Absolutely. I loved it. I, yeah. I love my time there. Um, place I hate. Oh God. Anything with a fort, anything army, Fort Knox, whatever it is, <laughs> anything army, go fuck yourself. Um, but actual city, I'd probably say um, Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> Newark, Newark is bad. <laughs> it's what? one of the grossest places I've ever been. How much? I don't understand why you didn't stay close to, to, close to us that weekend. But, but Because I was trying to be cheap because I have to put on a $200,000 show for you. 
that, that was, for, 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 that us, was pretty for cheap. us okay <laughs> 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 it was already pretty it was it was already a good price i bet johnny could have let you stay on his couch that's how that's how I'm, that's how many pennies i'm pitching trying to pay for this guy so go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Tyler oh, you heard it here folks <laughs> <laughs> i've also never i've never been in newark that's my first time in newark i didn't go there when i was visited last year yeah Man, we went to a restaurant and like it was the worst service ever. They were just the waiter was just mean to us. It was I'd never seen that before. <laughs> like, and I'm just like he's saying things. I'm like, are you? What are you trying to do? Like, um, yeah. And it, and there's trash everywhere and it's, there's rats and it's gross. Yeah, I've never you're, been to work. I don't think I'll go. I it don't recommend bad. it. Yeah. Well, right. that's it. That's my screwball question. Those are your screwball <laughs> questions. That's it. That's all I got. Oh man. All right. Um, so the one question, and maybe this is more pertaining for Jeff and, and Anthony. So would, would you guys be willing? So this is a fan question. And I'm going to mix it into my question. Would you guys be willing to buy um, a Boston Massacre class shirt after Mike and I take one in second? One in second <laughs> and, and just to, and just to uh, for context, the Boston Massacre is 19 is 1770, um, of course, but part of the- Oh, you didn't know the year. Yeah, 1770, (laughs) Revolutionary War, a big incident that, of course, sparked the the events around Boston. Of course, why we're the Patriots. Um, But are you going to buy a shirt, Anthony? The Boston Massacre shirt? Uh, No, I won't. You give me one. That'd be Uh, fine. uh, If you give me one, I'll wear it. I'll give you a- a, 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 How about you, Jeff? Even though you, you don't even like you don't like well, my shirts. Well, well, so, well, so I do much. like your shirts. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, if you if you win if you do if you guys do that we'll sell them on Strength Leap. Mm. The Clash Boss. Get, get a depth uh, depth before dishonors design for it. Actually, yes, that's what we'll Ooh. do. We'll get a design yeah. from them. They make good mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. They make good design. Cool Patriot. All right, yeah. you, you're right here. Um, but it, uh, yeah, that's uh, I think that that's yeah that's the most most of the questions for today, guys. I think we're. We're wrapping up a little early, um, but of course, I really appreciate, appreciate you guys are coming on. Of course, we are five weeks as of tomorrow from Clash, so everybody's going to be bringing their best stuff. Is on oh, the- oh, oh, I got one more screwball oh, question. Anthony, oh, has- all right, go ahead, Anthony. T- take the floor. Who's going to win this weekend, Eddie or Thor? I don't care. Nope, you have to answer. Uh, I had to answer earlier, so you have to answer. <laughs> I'll say Thor. All right, why? Oh, just because he likes Ozzy. He likes the dog. <laughs> That's it. Good. That's a good as reason as any in this whole fight. Anyways, like you. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I hate them both, but um, uh, probably Thor. I don't know. The question I, is, I, so I said, I said it was going to be a DQ because Eddie was going to headbutt him. <laughs> will you? Will you guys watch? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Is, yeah, it, not, is it like an actual like sanctioned fight and stuff? Or they moved it to Dubai because they couldn't get sanctioned in America. I'll put it that okay. way. Because you have to get drug tested when you compete in a real sport. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. No drug talk. Edit that out. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 a, it's a different sport. It's boxing. Yeah. Just different sport. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Where All right. But this has been the, of course, the 13th episode of the strong, 14th episode. Lucky number 13 or 14. Yeah. <laughs> but guys, thanks for coming on. I'm going to give I'm gonna give Mike and Jeff the last word. So Mike, you go first, and Jeff, you'll go last. So last words. I'm first? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, yeah, everybody listening, make sure you uh, tune into the live stream on April 22nd and watch us all on ESPN on uh, the 23rd. Yeah. Hopefully I can make it, but uh, April 23rd. And then I'll see you two, Mike and Double Nick, weeks. on the 9th. Yeah. The 9th. Yeah. Actually, I was going to end it there, but Jeffrey, you got to be mindset. Where If you live, listen to the other Strongman podcast, we're all about mindset. So you got to believe, visualize hey, that you're going to be in that final. And that's the listen, only way Jeff, it's going to happen. Jeff, Jeff, let me put it this way. Mike, all right, Mike, Nicholas, and I all believe in you. We wouldn't fucking do that if it wasn't there. You know what I mean? So thank you. Man. Yeah. Let's do this. Hey, 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 you're, hey, you're not coming up to train with us just because you think you might make the finals because yep. you know, you're you're, you're the making finals. the finals. Yep. So come on, come on, like, the finals. subscribe, comment on our YouTube, <laughs> and tell us who we should bring on next. And use positive reinforcements with your own mind. Yes. <laughs>